Hi, I'm Harrison, and in this video, I want to introduce Project Jugglebot. First off, what is Project Jugglebot? Well, I've been juggling for about 10 years and studying engineering for about 7, and frankly, I'm pretty amazed that no one has created a robot that can juggle better than current juggling robots can. And you might be thinking, hang on, I've seen videos of, pe of juggling robots that seem to do a pretty good job of it. Well, as we will find out shortly, all of these robots, save one, is not doing exactly what you think it might be doing. And we'll see what I mean by that in just a second. I want to fix this with Jugglebot. In this project, I want to build a robot that can juggle at least as well as I can. And one of the main objectives of, th of this project is to do what I've been referring to as deep bluing juggling. And for anyone unfamiliar with the reference, I'm referring to back in 1997 when IBM's chess playing computer beat Garry Kasparov. And from that point forward, chess has been more or less in the domain of computers. I want to build a robot that will do this to juggling, at least to ball juggling. Those club and ring and scarf and whatever else jugglers out there can rest easy knowing that I'm going to leave you alone, for now, at least. <laughs> and this is why I'm referring to this project as Project Deep Blue Juggling, or PDJ for short. Unlike with chess, where you either win or you lose, with juggling there are many different ways of being good. However, for me, there is one world record that takes the cake for being the most impressive and would be the most clear indicator of success for this project, and that is the most number of objects thrown for at least one throw each, and caught. And right now, that world record is 14 throws of 14 balls, which was achieved by Alex Barron in 2017. And in case you're interested, this is what that looks like. Pretty quick, huh? In case you missed it, here it is again. For reference, I can comfortably juggle five balls, and I'm working on seven, but I've been doing that for two years, and progress is pretty slow. It gets tricky as the numbers go up. <laughs> so that's what humans can do, but what about robots? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you've probably seen videos of robots juggling, and some of them are doing a pretty good job of it. However, all of these, except for one, are, can be thought of as a blind slave which is to say that they have, they're just simply following pre-calculated movements to get the balls to follow a desired path, and they have no idea where the balls actually are. Now, this presents two problems. One is that they aren't able to correct for any misthrows or any issues that come up during the ball's flight, and secondly, and in my opinion more interestingly, they aren't able to throw any patterns other than the patterns that are specifically programmed into them. You can't just tell them, throw this pattern, and they can just do it. You have to specifically calculate exactly where to move each hand at each instant to get the balls to do that. And that's not interesting at all. It's no fun. What about that robot I just mentioned that can be considered a true juggling robot? With cameras that track the balls at 1000 frames per second, or 1000 hertz, this robot can update its state dynamically based on where the balls are at every instant, correcting for any missed throws or any issues that are coming up during the ball's flight. At least, in theory. In practice, well, I wouldn't expect this robot to have a very long career in the circus. If you're interested in learning more about the current state of the art, there is a fantastic video by Luke Barrage that details many of the current juggling robots and what their limitations are. I've added a link in the description. Clearly, Building a juggling robot is no trivial feat, with many universities and large institutions putting in a lot of effort and only really getting as far as a normal human with a couple hours of practice. With a project of this complexity, it can be pretty tricky to know where to start and what to do, but if my engineering background has taught me anything, it's that if you have any large insurmountable problem, if you break it down into small enough chunks and solve those chunks individually and then build it back up again, you should be able to make pretty good progress. So with that in mind, I've broken the act of juggling down into four main parts. And those are the hand, which actually receives the ball and throws it again. 
the arm, which moves the hand into the correct positions at the correct times, the eyes, which will see the balls, and the brain, which takes the information from the eyes and sends it to the hand and the arm to get everything to move into the correct spot. Now, each of these is definitely not trivial on its own. However, it's a starting point. And if, with each of these being broken down into further subparts and sub subparts and so on, we should be able to make progress. I was initially pretty overwhelmed at how quickly branching everything out into subparts and sub subparts creates this enormous map of things that need to be done. And I couldn't hold that all in my mind at any one time. It was, it was too complicated. There too many things linking between all the parts. But it was around this time when I watched the anime Dr. Stone and got the idea of drawing out what I've been referring to as a Senku diagram, named after the main character, to map out where, how everything links together. Now, since then, I've learned that these are called roadmap diagrams and are pretty commonly used in complex projects, but I prefer the name Senku diagram, so I'm going to stick with that. This is the main Senku diagram that I have made for Project Jugglebot. And this has been immensely helpful in allowing me to figure out where I want to, where I need to start work and what I can do if I get a little bit frustrated with what I'm currently working on, which has happened a few times so far already. Now, I'm not going to go into full detail on this diagram right now because I don't want this video to be half an hour long, uh, but I'll just go over a quick overview of what it is. And then in future videos, I'll go into more detail on the specifics. Starting off over here on the left, I've got all of the goals, and those are in white. And one of these goals we've already talked about to be, well, to deep blue juggling. Another goal at this level is n number of hands. And by this, I mean, I want to make many robots that can all juggle between each other, because there's quite a lot of interesting patterns that you can make when passing juggling, which is what it's called when you're juggling between people. And I want to replicate that with Jugglebot. The other goal at this level is the Juggle Arbitrary Site Swaps, which refers to the site swap notation which is used to describe juggling patterns. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail here, and trust me, detail abounds. Uh, but suffice to say that using this notation, you can map numbers to juggling throws. And the rough correspondence is the value of the number corresponds to the height of the ball. So a five throw is higher than a three throw. There's a lot more to it than that, but let's just keep it at that for now. And what I mean by this goal is that I want to be able to tell Jugglebot, juggle this pattern. Say I wanted to juggle five, three, one. I'll just be able to tell it, juggle five, three, one, and then it will do it. And it will go through any transitory throws that it needs to, to get to that new pattern, and then it will get there, and it will keep doing that pattern. That's something that I think will be pretty damn cool. Now the final main goal is to discover new tricks. And I'm not too sure if this is going to be possible, because ever since the 1980s, when site swap notation was created, uh, there have been a lot of pretty clever mathematicians and physicists who have been working out the theory behind juggling, and they've fleshed it out to an extent that is beyond what is actually physically possible, like juggling backwards in time, for example. So I'm not too hopeful that it will be possible if I get an AI to control Jugglebot, if it, if it will be able to find new tricks, but you never know. <laughs> You just never know. I'm sure that before site swap notation was created, people would have thought that they'd already discovered all the tricks and there was nothing left to be discovered. But here we are now. So to achieve those goals, I have broken down the uh, divisions into throwing a ball, catching a ball, and having a model of juggling. And it's worth noting here that I have not kept the same divisions that I outlined earlier, those being the hand, the arm, the eyes, and the brain. And that's mostly just because I hadn't come up with those nice wordings up until recently. And with the way that I've made this diagram, it's a little bit annoying to change everything around. So I've just left it as it is. And this is functionally identical to that anyway. If anyone has any good programs or any suggestions for how I can lay this out a little bit better, then please let me know. 
So moving on from these main systems in light blue, I've gone into subsystems and then from there specific problems. And then in orange, I've written out my ideas for how to solve those problems. And then in red, I've got notes or thoughts or things that have popped up when I've tried those ideas. And then in the green with the ticks, as a bit of a spoiler for what I will cover in future videos, this is what I've already finished. So hopefully this has given you a bit of an idea of what this diagram is and how I'm using it. Oh, and also this stuff up here is another side project that I've been working on that's very closely related to Jugglebot called Ball Butler, but I'll get to that in another video. So this roughly fills you in on what this project is about, and it's touched a little bit on what I've done so far. Now I want to talk about what I want to do with this YouTube series and this channel in general. One of the main purposes of this series is to create a video log and a progress update of what I've been up to. And similarly, I, want, I would love to get any suggestions from any of you out there who have any ideas of what I could be doing better. Because I never expect my ideas to be the best one possible. I do what works, but I'm always looking back on things that I've done previously and thinking of better ways to do them. And if anyone has any suggestions on how I can improve what I'm doing, I am all ears. The second reason for this series is to show people what's possible with enough patience and focus and to show them how to do exactly what I'm doing. In that light, I plan on making a second channel where I delve into more detail on the math and the design decisions that I'm making and why I am making them. I want to show people that it's often not as tricky as you might think and the skills required to do what I plan on doing are not as intense as you might suspect. That takes us to the end of Project Deep Blue Juggling's first video. I hope that you found it interesting and I hope that you stick around for the project. It's going to be a pretty fun one. Till then.